Hi, everybody. It's another edition of Yes, We're Here. It's Ian Eagle. It's Ian Joy. Wait, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm confused. Ian? It's Ian Eagle and Ian Joy. Ian or Ian? What's your name? This I is forget. the elephant in the room, truly. 51 years of my life, I've been building up to this moment to <laughs> deal with an Ian one-on-one -on -one and really hammer out what the issue is here. <laughs> I'm going to blame you. Every time I get a call from the bosses or colleagues, it's always, hey, yeah. hey, I enjoy. Can you, uh, <laughs> can you join us for a meeting? And I'm like, no, no, sorry. My name's Ian. You know, I have to correct everybody. So finally getting to talk to you about this issue is a great thing for me. Ian, you don't even know how much joy, excuse the pun, that gives me to hear that you've had to go through this experience in, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, let me give you a little bit of background just so you understand. Yes. My parents wanted to name me after my father's mother who had passed away. Her name was Ida. Mm -hmm. So they had very limited options. They were looking at Ivan, which was very archaic. Ira, uh, which did not have a great ring to it. So yeah. they basically came up with Ian, but pronounced E-Y-E-A-N. Yeah. I was never Ian. I was always Ian. And I've had to fight this for my entire life. This is not a problem. I'm up yeah. to the task. I was offended early in my life. I would battle people. In school? At, at some point. I <laughs> you know, after I met everybody at the Yes Network, and of course, I met yourself, I yeah. called my parents and I said, why did you call me Ian? Is it Ian or is it Ian? <laughs> I said, at one point you were going to call me James. Why didn't you just call me James? And then oh, I wouldn't have had this problem. 100%. Well, <laughs> one story, I did a net game. This was 2000 and it was in Salt Lake City. And I took a red eye after the game. I went directly to the airport. Things were a little bit tight. Yeah. And this was before you could print your boarding pass ahead of time. So I run to the counter. I hand my ID to the woman yeah. at the counter at the airline and she stares at my license and she looks at me and she looks at the license and she says, Eon Eagle? I said, really? I said, you want to try that again? She said, Ian Eagle? I have no idea where she came in. So I had to explain, no, no, it's Ian Eagle. And she was not buying it oh all. man well i tell you something you have definitely made the name ian a lot more famous than it once was that is for sure <laughs> that's a credit to you and your talent Thank you. <laughs> ian let me give you a little background on my soccer knowledge go for it it's all based on the 70s grew up in new york yeah cosmos fan mm -hmm. would head out to jersey watch pele canalia Beckenbauer, Messing, and I was into it. They had a cool that. song. Yeah. Uh, they got a lot of people to show up for the NASL. And it was a movement at the time in New York. Oh, yeah. Then, oh, yeah. briefly, Steve Zungel mm -hmm. and the New York Arrows became a legitimate thing. Yeah. And I know about your background. Your dad was a professional yes. on the West Coast and obviously overseas, you a professional soccer player. Mm -hmm. uh, it was something. Late oh, 70s yeah. in New York, the Cosmos took over. It was real. Oh, yeah. I mean, when you ever hear stories about Pelé, he always talks about his time in New York, probably more than anywhere else. Of course, for the national team for Brazil and the records that he broke, but his history and his biggest stories are when he was with the New York Cosmos. And yeah. I'm not surprised. Obviously, we've met in person, and, and I can tell that you just love sports in general. You like all sports. You follow all sports. And, of course, there's a passion there for anything that's on television, like myself. Now, I'll tell you quickly, when I grew up, my father, of course, was, uh, was a professional soccer player. He trained me. And then when I started to realize, oh, wow, my father's pretty good at this, <laughs> he gave me a gift right, for my birthday. And I think he's going to really enjoy this because he watches every one of these shows. This photograph right here, this photograph right here behind me, yeah. this is a picture of my father one and one against Pelé. Oh, wow. And then right here, this was his teammate Eusebio, who was the famous Portuguese sure. player at that time. 
And he managed to get these photographs signed before Eusebio died, but also Pele, he's got signed as well. So that was on my wall. And the title always said, make it happen. And that for me was an inspiration in life. So I'm glad you actually lived through those times because those were magical times in soccer. Completely. And the dynamic between you and your dad, obviously you had this bond over soccer. So you had the normal father-son relationship, but then it went to this completely other level because you could relate to what he went through, how to yeah. prepare, how to be a professional. That, that's a really interesting part to your relationship that I'm sure you look back on now and, and realize how special that was that you got to share it. Yeah, I mean, I'm grateful. Of course, I had that relationship with him and I got to learn from him. But at the same time, there comes that pressure as well when, yeah. when you're trying to make it as a professional. And I'm sure you're experiencing the same thing right now with Noah, right? Yeah. He's, he's going through his career and, and you're giving him every single piece of advice and experience is it, it, priceless for him. Um, but at the same time, you still got to make your way. You still got to create your own talent, create your own buzz and create your own opportunities as well. So um, it, it brought a great deal of opportunity for me to learn pretty quickly. Um, but I was grateful for that. And I don't think you could ever have learned from a better person than your own father. And you nailed it. Uh, my son Noah is a broadcaster with the Clippers out on the West Coast. And yep. the way our relationship is, it's not dominated by broadcast conversation. And I'm not critiquing every broadcast that he does. I pick and choose my spots. I try to share some larger scope views on the business. And I think more than anything else, and probably speaking for you as well, growing up, he was around it. So none of this was intimidating to him. None of this seemed like it was unattainable. It was part of his everyday life. And if anything, that probably was the biggest lesson that he learned, being a fly on the wall, watching me prepare, uh, understanding how much work goes into it. And when he got a chance to do it, having the confidence to go out and be his own person, be his own broadcaster and develop his own style. Yeah, you know what? I actually met him when I met you for the first time. I met Noah uh, that same night and I was so impressed with him, with his character. And, you know, I'm very quick to judge a person as well. Good handshake great character, good conversation. And, and you can just tell whether someone has it or they don't have it. And clearly I could tell he's got something pretty special. He's got a good aura about him as well. That goes a long way in this industry, being a good person and being able to recognize that he's going to have to work very hard, but he's got tremendous talent already no. there that he's, he's got something to build on. That means a lot. Can you just say his name again? It just sounds cool coming out of your, your mouth. Noah Eagle. He's a legend <laughs> and he will be. A big legend. Hey, listen, right. I got I to gotta pick on you real quickly because yeah. there was one broadcast that stuck out in the top of my mind. When we got this opportunity to talk with one another, I had to bring it up because I didn't get the chance to bring it up with Jim because we ran out of time. You and Jim did a game, Jim Spinarco, in London, and <laughs> you guys used slang words for the whole game. And for me, I mean, of course, I didn't watch it live at that time, but I managed to catch it back on YouTube. And if anybody gets a chance, go check it out. It's just British slang word after British slang word. That must have been an awesome experience for you. Let me, let me make this point about that broadcast. Jim was completely jet lagged. So I think we were getting a version of Jim that was not completely there. And he just went with it. If you want to go and check it on YouTube, it was the Nets and the Atlanta Hawks going head to head in London. And I don't know if Spinarkel cackled more on the air over the course of that two hours than he has in his entire career. So Ian, that that means a lot coming from you. Hey, we have a couple of messages uh, for all the, the great fans that have been tuning into these. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can tweet at Yes Network and use the hashtag yes mailbag and we're going to get those questions answered so uh, this is a great way for everybody to be engaged and be involved with what we're doing here at yes yeah it's quite impressive what we're actually doing Ian, as well everybody's coming together yes we're here is the logo for us right now and of course there has been some tremendous content that's been put out there all these great figures in sport mixing with one another, getting an opportunity, share some stories, learn from one another. That will all be put on the Yes Network as well. And if you want more details on that, please check out yesnetwork.com for more information. I, and I, honestly, for, for me personally, 
it, this has been a tremendous experience. It's, it's an awful time. But to be able to have a conversation with you one-on-one -on -one and, and all the other legends that we've got at the network, that means so much to me as well. So awesome, man. Great to chat with you. You too. I'm going to leave you with this. Uh, Ian, if you put a BR in front of your name, what, what would that sound like? <laughs> Brian. <laughs> <laughs> you win.